Hi, I'm Skyler, and this is my first video of the new YouTube channel, Hey, I Can Make That. And today what we're going to be making is a pallet table um, with a coin top. So stay tuned, we're going to get started on this. The first thing we're going to need for this project are some pallets. Three of these 2 by 2s um, 8 foot sections at Lowe's. You don't need those, you could always use the pallet wood and cut yourself some 2 by 2s down. So, inch and a half finishing nails. Handful of eight penny nails and some wood glue. Now that would be enough to finish just a pallet table, but if you wanted to do a penny top or a coin top, you're going to need some coins, um, some glaze coat, some sort of a caulking, a liquid nails or some other kind of caulking to caulk up the holes in the top. If you want to put a finish on your table, some sort of a finish. I'm going to use boiled linseed oil on this table. You'll also need some tape and some black spray paint. So, you can... so for tools you're going to need, you're going to need a tape measure, a hammer, preferably a square, a saw of some kind, you can use a regular wood saw, or you can use a skill saw. Um, that's the basic list as far as tools if you weren't going to do a penny top. If you're going to put a penny top on it, you're going to need some mixing materials for the, for the, for the glaze coat, so um, spatulas for spreading it and some tubs for mixing it. Some paint sticks with that also and it also would be nice if you had a, a drill for pre-drilling um, nails or anything like that you don't need that either but I mean it'd be better to have that and also you're going to need a good level for leveling the table before you start pouring that glaze coat all right so now we're going to make the three frames that's going to make up the top of our table and the middle shelf and then the bottom and that's going to hold the whole table together and what we're going to use to make those is the two by fours that we took out of our pallets these are the main three stringers that go through the pallets. And what we need is actually just a two by two, which is basically an inch and a half by an inch and a half. And so what we could do here is mark our inch and a half line on this, and then take our skill saw and just rip it, make our own two by twos. Basically, I did this one already, you can see. Just cut that piece off, get rid of it, and then we can, we can use these. But that takes a little bit of time. And my skill saw blade is kind of dull, so I'm probably going to avoid doing all of those like that. I went to the to my Lowe's and uh, got this 2x2 two two already to go. So the whole reason I'm making a pallet table is because I'm cheap, right? But these aren't that expensive, and they're less expensive than a new blade. So I'm going to go ahead and do. Um, you could definitely go with this route, though, if you wanted to. So let's go ahead and get started putting those together. So here's the basic plan for those three frames we're making. So we're gonna have these 18 inch pieces, which is gonna be six of those, cause it's gonna be a total of three of these frames. And then the overall width of this thing is gonna be 15 inches. So that means we're gonna to have to have these 12 inch pieces here to make that happen with the width of these. So that's gonna be, we're gonna need nine of those for the, for the three frames also. Okay, so the first thing these plans call for is 18, an 18 inch length for this, for this frame. And we're gonna need we're gonna need six of them. So I'm gonna cut the measure the first one, mark it, cut it, and then we're gonna use that one to go ahead and measure the rest of them. So we're gonna start with this here. Take an 18 inch measurement, make our marks, get our square. Okay, so now we're ready to cut that. We're gonna go ahead and cut that and use that to make the rest of our measurements. Okay, so now that we have this 18 inch piece, we'll go ahead and stick it on there and then start marking the rest of them. There's one. All right, so now they're all marked out, we're going to go ahead and cut them out and then get started on the next measurement. Okay, so now we have our six 18 inch pieces and we have our nine 12 inch pieces and we're ready to start putting these frames, these three frames together. All right, now we're going to pre drill it, glue it, and start nailing it together. Alright, well that's all 
glued and nailed together now, so we are ready to go ahead and start doing the other two and getting those finished up. So now we have all three of our frames made, we're going to go ahead and start covering them with pallet wood now. So what we got to do now is select some of the wood off of our pallets that we like the best. I always try looking for colors that I really like, like this one has a nice nice reddish hue through it, it's kind of got a dual tone, so I want to highlight that one. So I probably put that one up front. And then um, you're going to want to get, because there's different thicknesses of boards too, so you want to make sure you get the, the right design laid out that you like and that will cover completely your frame. So, let's see here. I always like to do the nail side sticking up because I like to see those nails. Just add a little bit to the rustic nature of it. Okay, so it looks like I have four boards here that's going to completely cover my frame. The problem is now we got to get them cut down to size, and this back one, you know, the frame only comes to about right there. So we're going to have to mark this and then rip it to make it fit appropriately. So we're going to go ahead and start cutting them lengthways first, and then we'll deal with this one last. All right, so what I'm going to do is start cutting these to 18 inch lengths, and I should be able to get two 18 inch lengths out of each one of these boards. So that's going to go ahead and cover two of these frames. We're going to get uh, measuring that and start cutting those out. All right, so now they're all marked out, we're going to go ahead and start cutting these down to size. Before you start putting slats on the top of this frame, you need to check it for square. And the way you do that is you measure corner to corner. So we measure one way. Right now this is just shy of 23 and a half inches. And we'll measure it this way. And what it should be, it should be about the same. So that is just a little shy of 23 and a half inches. So this one's pretty close to square. It's very, very close. So if it wasn't square, say this side was a little long, say this side was longer. Then this side, we need to make it match. So if it's longer, we need to rack it in like that. Check it again. And then just keep racking it back and forth until you have it square. Square, close to square. I mean, we're not making a grand piano, so. As my dad used to say. As my dad does say. All right, so now these are all cut down to 18 inches, and I'm picking the ones that I want more closer to the front first. So this is that one that I really like with the dual tones with that up front. And this one I saw have a stamp on it, so I'll put that up close to the front. We'll kind of work our way that way, making sure everything's more or less the right size. It can be off a little bit this way or, the, or that way. And then this one, this is that fat one, I decided that's the one I'm going to start shaving off to make it fit in this opening. So the first thing I'd like to do, before we start doing anything else, is get these all pre-drilled, glued, and then nailed in. And what I'm going to use for that is some inch and a half finishing nails. And that's going to, with the glue and the finishing nails, it'll hold together really strong. So we're going to go ahead and start doing that now. Just want to make sure everything's nice and flush to the front, flush to the sides. All right, so now those are all glued and nailed on there. So the next step now is to take this board, we're gonna measure this one, make it fit just right. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna mark this up here, I'll do the same thing on the other side, and then we'll go ahead and mark a line in between and then cut it with the skill saw. If you had a, a regular hand saw, that would work too, so it doesn't have to be a skill saw. So now we have our line marked here, I'm gonna go ahead and start ripping it with this skill saw. Make sure it's hanging off your table, nothing's going to get in the way. Alright, 
It's a dry fit real quick and it fits pretty good. So now we're going to go ahead and glue it and nail it down. And this wood that I have I've been using here isn't actually too bad of wood, so I'm just going to skip the pre-drilling. A lot of times pallet wood is not that good. All right, there's the first one done. All right, so now we have all of our pallet frames covered in this pallet wood material. So we've got three of them done like that, all three. And we want this thing to be 19 inches high when it's done. So it's time to start putting the sides and the back on. And what I'm going to be doing, I'm going to be coating the, the top one of these with foreign coins and putting like a, a coating over the top of them. So that's going to require me to have a, a quarter inch lip all around this top one. I wasn't going to do that coin thing. You know, you could have just put, bring the sides and the top flush up to this and then you'd be, you could be done. Um, or if you had a little more forethought, you could even have extended these, this top on the very top one out, you know, a uh, half an inch on either side and the front and the back, I guess. And then you could have actually had this top completely covering the sides. It's really a preference thing, so um, that's not a big deal either way. But anyway, so what I'm gonna be doing is going to start putting the back on first and then the sides and I'm going to have to have a quarter inch lip sticking up so that's what I'm going to start doing. Um, we're going to start by, I've decided to pick these four boards for the back and they are perfectly uh, the right width already so that's nice, I don't have to rip anything down. But I do have to start cutting these down to 19 inches so that's what I'm going to start doing right now. Okay so these are the boards that I'm going to use for my back here and they're all cut down to 19 inches now them all the way I want to have them show out. I want to have all these nails showing out. So that's what it's going to look like. This is going to be the top and this is going to be my bottom. The top is the straightest size that I have because I want it to be nice and even across the top and and you know that quarter inch sticking up I want it to be perfect. So that's why that's why I'm laying it out now. So what I want to do now is to mark that quarter inch lip. I'm going to flip all these boards over. Now that I have them all flipped over I'm going to take a quarter inch mark and then mark a nice quarter inch line across all these individually and then that'll give me a nice even line when I start nailing and gluing. So that's what I'm going to do now is mark that line. All right. Now we've got all our marks down, it's time to start gluing and nailing. So this one's going to be my top, and this one here is going to be my bottom. So it's going to go ahead and lay them where I want them to be. Move that away. All right. So my first board. Actually, I think my first board is going to just be right there. Start at the very bottom and work my way up. Before I do two on one side, let's do it on this side too, so that way we get it as even as possible. Okay, so now at this point, we're going to make sure we're going to see that quarter inch mark on this side of the board here. So we'll get this thing squared away. I'm going to do this far in now just to make sure that I have it squared up. Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay, so now we have our back on this thing, and it's time to start thinking about putting in that middle shelf. Now, you don't have to put the shelf in, but I'm going to go ahead and keep with the shelf here. So, let's turn it on the side now, grab that shelf. So what we have now here is an opening that's about 14 and a quarter inches. And the thickness of this shelf is right about two and a quarter inches. So what I want to do is subtract two and a quarter from 14 and a quarter to get what the total space here is going to be, which is going to end up to be 12. So what I want to do is divide that by two because I want six inches to be on this side, six inches to be on this side. So knowing that, I'm going to go ahead and remove the shelf out of the way and then make my marks on, on the bottom, one side or the other, you don't need to have both. So I'm going to measure six inches up, make a mark, do the same over there, and then make a line between the straight edge. There. All right. Use that as a guide to put our shelf in nice and level. What I'm going to do is I'm going to apply some glue on this side before I get started. Go ahead and nail it in from the back. Alright, that is installed. So now that we have this shelf in here, we're going to want to start putting these sides in. So there's a couple things to think about when we're starting to put the sides in though. First one is, we have this quarter inch lip at the top we have to continue to remember. And then we're also going to put some face plates in these that's going to be out of this pallet material so that way it you know, cleans everything up. You don't want to see any 2x4 at all when you're finished. So that means we're going to have you know, a pallet the right, you know, the right size sitting in here. And that's about a half inch thick. So we're going to have to have a half inch of this overhanging beyond because I want to see this in and not, and not those. We also have to remember to mark you know, this, this measurement here which is going to be 6 inches from this, from this point here up. So we're gonna go ahead and get started with that now. So the first mark, this is gonna be our top side again because it's got the nails in it, and it's the straightest side that we have. So that's gonna be the quarter inch line we're gonna to have to mark again. So that'll be the first step. Yeah, that's it there. Okay, so there's that. Alright, so now we have the quarter inch mark here and the half inch mark here. So now the next thing is we need to situate that in the right, in the right distance. So if I just measure from the back from the very bottom down here to the bottom of this, about eight, eight inches and an eighth. So I'll measure up from this eight inches and an eighth. Make a mark there. So now the next step is to glue it and start nailing it down. All right, so now we did this side. We're gonna go ahead and flip it over. I'm gonna do the same exact thing on the other side. Okay, so now we have this side on. We also have this side on. And then we just gotta fill in the two sides now. And actually, luckily, it turns out that these two fat boards perfectly fit in there. So I just had to cut them out of 19 inches and they more or less perfectly fit in. So I'm just gonna have to nail them in. And then we'll do the same thing to the other side. All right, so the sides are on now. And now the only wood we really need to do left is these two, or these three front faces. So there's a couple ways of doing it. You can measure them and then mark them off that way. And you have to remember this one has a quarter inch lip that's going to be above also. So I pre-measured these. This one's going to be two and three eighths of an inch, and the rest of these two are two and a quarter. So I'm going to, instead of measuring it like that, I'm just going to go ahead and stick a board up there like this and just eyeball it and measure it off from the back. Or mark it off from the back, just take it back there and run it across. It's only a pallet table, right? Alright, so now we got our mark on that one, at the top. Did a mark on the middle one already. And I have a third around here somewhere, there it is. Go ahead and do the bottom now. Alright, so there's that. So we're going to go ahead and cut those and then glue and nail them in. 
All right, those final pieces were cut, glued, and then nailed in. And so pretty much that's it for cutting wood and everything. The next step now is to sand down all the rough edges. You want to smooth everything out. Kind of any, if there's any um, elevation changes anywhere, just kind of smooth them out to where they're, they're not noticeable. And once we're done with that, we can start working on the top and then the final stain. You can leave it like that if you wanted to. But I'm going to probably put some sort of a, an oil finish or some kind of a finish on it. So that is the next step basically of sanding it down. And just a, a regular sandpaper or, um, you know, orbital sander or something like that. And we'll get it done. Okay, so I know how boring sanding is. I probably know how boring watching somebody sand is. So I decided to spare you guys that. I went and sanded it myself outside and rounded all these off because I my half inch was a little bit lacking, I guess, when I put that sticking out. So either way, that's no big deal. I rounded them off. Actually, it looks a little bit better even. So rounded all the corners off and then sanded all the surfaces with the exception of this surface. You know, because we're going to be covering that with with a bunch of foreign coins or you can use pennies or whatever so um you don't want any splinters you know so rounding all those edges off will help you with that it also makes it look a lot better and then you don't want to totally sand away all the all the detail you want a lot of that detail to remain so you know some of this color difference would be lost if you totally sanded it so be careful there's like all these dimples in it from who knows what um i guess the making the the boards or whatever you don't want to lose all that either so do it enough to be smooth and you don't feel like you're going to get caught on anything when you're when you're feeling it and um yeah so that's pretty much it that's all rounded off and ready for the next step so i'm thinking the next step is going to be taping off this top area and then I'm going to have to fill all these gaps because I'm going to be pouring a pour a pour acrylic or whatever it is on top of those all those foreign coins and it would just leak right through all these cracks so what I'm going to do is tape this off caulk and fill all those cracks and then once that dries we're going to spray paint that whole interior black and that's going to help give the table a little bit of depth you don't want to see the wood underneath at least I don't think you do I think it looks a lot better if it was black underneath so that's what I'm going to do next and then we will move on to coating the top or we'll do the staining I don't know yet we'll figure it out okay so here we go starting to caulk this in so I decided okay I didn't probably need to tape so we're going to skip that step for now so but what this is here is uh, liquid nails liquid nails construction adhesive and um, it bonds to pretty much everything so I always have some of it around so I'm going to start filling in a lot of these cracks and then rubbing it in with my finger and then cleaning it up with a rag so you don't, you don't want a whole lot of you know, uh, elevation change in there. So go ahead and get started here. All right, so after I had taped it, I went ahead and spray painted it with some flat black spray paint. I thought I was recording it, but apparently I wasn't. So there's no redos on this one. So you see what you get, you get what you see. Anyway, so it's all ready to go now, and we're just going to go ahead and let this spray paint dry, and then once it's dry, we'll start gluing our coins down. Okay, so we're waiting for this stuff, this spray paint to dry on top. I'm going to go ahead and start applying my finish. So I'm going to do something pretty simple, just a boiled linseed oil finish. Basically, you just kind of wipe it on and then wipe off the excess, and that's the end of it. It's real simple. So that is what I've decided to go with here. So we'll start going ahead and doing that now. And probably a good idea to use, you know, gloves or something like that, you know, safety third. Safety third. All right, so here's what it looks like after we've applied the boiled linseed oil all over the surface of it here. Some of that light's coming out a little bit. Some of the boards do better than others, like that one's a little better. These two back here look really nice. So it all depends on the on the wood that you're using. You don't really know a lot of times with pallets. So, but that is looking pretty good. So I think it's about time. It's still a little bit wet, but I think it's good enough for now. I'm gonna start putting some coins on the top of this thing. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start putting some of these foreign coins down on this table. And all I needed to do is really just hold there until I can get the, um, 
that, uh, that epoxy covering on it. So I'm just going to use this wood glue just to, just to hold them down long enough to get the epoxy on. And um, I'm using just a bunch of foreign coins here that um, I got some online in a big batch on eBay. And then I also got a bunch of them from my local coin shop. They had like a huge bag of just really cheap foreign coins. And um, you get them anywhere from 5 to 15 cents a piece or something. Um, you could easily use pennies, same thing, but I have a copy table already like that, so I want to do something different. So I'm going to go ahead and get started here. Oh, and another thing, be careful on how much of this wood glue you use, because if it squeezes out, you know, you're going to see it, so you don't want to see it. And I noticed um, on the penny table last time when I did that one, I used um, like regular Elmer's glue and it dries clear, um, but it, you, it shows up really brightly whenever you start putting the epoxy on. So make sure you don't have a whole lot squished out. <clears throat> okay, so I moved it to the floor because it was killing my back up on that table. So, but I'm getting almost to be halfway done here, just about getting there. And, uh... About ready to put the center piece in there. This might give me some hate mail, I think. So this coin is a Byzantine ancient from the reign of Justinian the First, about 1,500 years old. It's going right in the middle. All right. Cool. On, keep on making some progress. Alright, so I'm done with the coin top now. They're all glued down and now they're just waiting to dry and once they're dried up I'm going to start putting the epoxy over the top of it. Okay, so now it's dry enough for us to start putting that epoxy top on. So the first thing I did, I had to move it to the ground and then um, shim up the bottom and make sure the top is level. So I leveled it both ways and now it's ready to start pouring that stuff on. Um, so now we're going to go ahead and mix it up. This is what I'm using right here. Um, this glaze coat it's called. I got it at Lowe's. And um, you just go ahead and follow the instructions on the back. Just mix it up, pour it on, and then start leveling it out. It should self-level more or less, but kind of spread it around to level it out. So that's what I'm going to go ahead and do. Start mixing it up and get getting to that. Okay, so my epoxy is all mixed up, almost according to the instructions, completely. <laughs> and I'm going to go ahead and start pouring it on there. I don't want to overfill the thing, though. So I've got to be kind of careful here. So that was 16 ounces of mixed epoxy. I'll start spreading it around here, opening into the all the coins. I don't want to overdo the uh, have it pour over the side here though. All right, so now it's completely covered. I was really careful, you got to be really careful to work in all these edges. They can hide, you can have a little, a little area between a coin that's not completely filled. So now that it's completely filled and more or less leveled out, don't play with it too much. Let it sit and let it level itself out. So we'll come back to that whenever the directions say we can start uh, touching it again. So we'll let it dry completely, I'll probably just let it dry overnight. And that'll be that. All right, one thing I forgot to mention that it said in the instructions. So there's air bubbles in the whole thing. It said to go over it with a torch if you can, and it'll kind of pop all the air bubbles. So I'm gonna do that real quick. free now. So now we're going to go ahead and let it sit.
Okay, so it's the next morning and let it dry overnight. And um, it feels good and dry. It's really, really smooth, with the exception of a couple coins that were fatter. They're kind of, they're still coated, but they're, they got a little bump right there. I could fill a little bit more because I have a little bit more room here in this in this lip, but I decided not to. It's it's close enough for me. So, but yeah, it's pretty good. Not too bad. So the top is finished and everything's sealed up and ready to go.